Hello again, welcome back to Hangar 51. Today we're going to do the unboxing of the FMS 1700mm Corsair F4U version 3. This is the new one, guys, and this is the newest of the new ones. So we already got the upgraded prop. It says right on the box here that it's got the 1811 prop, so that's the new prop. We should have the 360 kV motor in this. Um, so this is uh, brand new. As of uh, today is uh, July 3rd. Um, so um, um, got this from Horizon I think a week or two ago. So this is the newest version and has all the upgrades. Got the 11, uh, the 1811 prop and the 360 motor. Um, I believe it's the 360 motor. It should be. If they got the 11, the 1811 prop, it should have the 360 motor. The 360 kV. If the motor is a um, a 5060 brushless motor, is what it says, and an 80 amp, a Hobby Wing 80 amp um, ESC. So we don't have the 120 amp that uh, RC and former Rich Baker was hoping they would put in there so you could run 8s. So we don't have that, it doesn't appear, but we do have the, it should be the uh, 5060, 360 kV versus the 300 motor. We got the 1811 prop, so those are the upgrades. So uh, so that's uh, that's what we got. I've already got, listen, I'm ahead of the game here, trying to cons conserve uh, some time on the camera. Um, so I've already pulled the foam out box and I've already cut all the tapes um, just to speed things up so so it's a double tier box guys when you get it all right so there's a lower tier and an upper tier and what we have on the upper tier here um, I don't believe yeah there's nothing on the bottom of the box I'm looking at that so here's here's what it looks like from the upper tier uh, we've got the one wing panel this is the left wing panel. The props are here, the blades of the prop. We've got a bag of uh, bits here, and, a, and, a, and the single point wing connectors are here. Okay, so that's, that's the top of the box. All right, so we're going to pull all this stuff out of the top of the box and then get that out of the way. Um, let me move that. Um, shooting this from my bedroom, guys, because it's pouring rain outside. I can't set up my canopy. And do it there and it's also uh, it's this this thing's way too big for my shop you know so we're gonna do it in my bedroom and yes there's an airplane in the bedroom uh, there's a pile of them over there there's a sailboat there there's an airplane up there <laughs> so there's wings wings more airplanes and wings along the side of the bed as they're stacked up in the corner so again, like you guys already know, and I got airplanes everywhere in the house, and this is the bedroom, and they're here too. So, so here's the bag of bits. We got screws for the wings. We got the wing hold downs, motor mount. I don't know why there's a motor mount because the motor's already in the plane, but there's a motor mount here for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe we'll find that out as we go. And here are the wing connectors. So we're gonna set this stuff over here. And then uh, we'll pull these foams out. Here's the, uh, this is typical FMS, guys. This is the way they do all their stuff. So we've got the four blades here that you bolt into the, the uh, spinner, um, which I don't believe is in here. No, it's not. So we got to find the spinner, which will be in here somewhere. But let's go ahead and pull this wing out. All right. So this is this is the left wing, and it's all set up for the the single point wing connector goes here. The spar goes through here and here. There's two spars, and they're also here. They're right here. Uh, we've got a short spar and a long spar. I'm assuming. Okay, so the long spar goes there, and the short spar goes here, I believe, if 
find it here in a second. Let me get this in here. Let's do a quick check here. Okay, so I'd say we have that back. That goes in too far. I thought one was bigger than the other, but they're the same size. So the long spar goes in the front, yep, and the short spar goes in the back, just like that. Okay. So leading edge of the wings here, long spar top, short spar bottom. Fiberglass spars, not carbon fiber. That's fine. Not going to be a problem. Plenty strong enough. You know, for you guys that have had FMS planes, you know that they're pretty. The foam they use is pretty rugged. They've got spars, you know, they've got all kinds of reinforcement built into the foam. Very dense, thick foam. So that that's not an issue, guys. You don't have to worry that it doesn't have carbon fiber. The fiberglass spars are more than enough on, a, on an FMS plane. So uh, let me do a quick final check here. Make sure I don't have anything else in the top section. Nope. So let me fold these back over. And you get this top section out of the way so that we can get to the next one. All right. Throw that out there. So here's what the next section looks like, guys. All right. So we got a lot of stuff in here. Okay. This is pretty well packed. Um, so we've got the rocket uh, launcher deals to put on the wing if you want to carry uh, the uh, so there's a what there is here is that there's already a panel on the wing a, a let's say a cover panel and if you want to install these you have to take one screw out remove the cover panel and this is a second cover panel with all the rockets mounted to it so you're simply going to remove this panel and replace it with this panel to put the ordnance on it if you want to carry them. And it's that simple. It's one screw, remove it, take the cover panel that's there off, and it's an identical cover panel, but it already has the pylons and the rockets already mounted. So, and if you want to, you know, if, I usually don't fly with ordnance, guys. It's just drag that, you know, I want to fly the airplane. I'm not really into this scale ordnance stuff. Especially when the ordnance aren't even painted to look. So if I was going to put these on the plane, I'd have to paint the ordnance, you know, so that they're correctly painted to look like real rockets, and then put them on. But since I'm not going to do that right now, we're not going to worry about that. But at least you get them. So that's a good thing. Okay, so here's the rudder, the vertical stabilizer. All right, so we have that right here. Actually, this is the rudder. Um, so we'll set that there. This is the elevator. Okay. Uh, all ball links pre-installed. Two servos. Servo wires are here, and uh, they're already uh, everything's already installed. The control horns are, are molded into the uh, molded or glued, and uh, they're good and solid. Yep, no, no movement there. And dual servos on the elevators. Um, and all that's all done. All the details here. You've got the ribbing on the real plane, the elevator surface. This was sheet metal uh, on the, the stabilizer, but the actual elevator was cloth covered. And they give you the sculpting to make it look like the cloth covering that would have been on it from the, from, on the real one. So very nicely detailed. Very, very nice. The paint on it's superb. We've got one. Uh, uh, nope, actually, there's two. We got two drop tanks that you can fly with or without, and they are set up with the scale uh, numbers. You know, when you, you know, after they set this on the plane, they screw down these numbers to stop it from rocking, and they're they're already simulated on the drop tank. And then it has those two little slides. So you're really going to just set it into the wing, into the little, if you're familiar with it, it's just, you, you drop these into the holes, and then you pull back, and they, they lock into place. And the wind blowing over it keeps them from coming off, because they have to slide back 
So for them to come off, you have to slide them forward. And if you're flying, there's wind blowing on them, pushing them back. So there's no possible way that they're going to come off in flight. So you've got your two drop tanks that come with it. We're not going to deal with that right now either. But very nice scale. I like I like it when they put the uh, the um, the simulated um, number thing on it. That that's a really nice look. I really like that. Okay, so here's the prop nut, which is a plastic molded, detailed uh, nut uh, with a steel, uh, it's got a steel nut inside with this plastic cover to make it look, you know, scaled. So that's really nice. Okay, so what else we got in here? I don't see the prop hub yet. Oh, wait a minute, here it is right here. Okay, so here's the prop hub. I'm just going to get that out of there. So for you guys that aren't familiar with FMS planes, this they've been doing this for years. They're still doing it. It's a very uh, reliable system. Okay, so the, you have to build the prop. That's why you got the blades separately, which I set. Where did I set those? Over here. Oh, right here. So, so you've got four individual blades that have to be screwed into this hub. Okay? And the way they do it, um, I'm not positive that this takes two screws or per, per blade or one and then, and then a, a locator pin. Let me look at the blades themselves. Yeah, there's two holes. So there's two screws. That hold each blade to the hub. Okay, one screw is longer than the other. It goes all the way through, um, and out out the other side. And then the one only goes halfway through, and uh, and stops. Um, but it, it's a very secure system, and usually the blades are very closely balanced. You're going to still need to balance this prop after you build it, um, but. If you choose not to, the plane will fly. 90% of the time, I've had, these have been very close. They've never been perfect, and I always balance my props. I balance all my props, and I highly recommend you do that. But um, but it'll probably come out close enough that you could fly the plane with it the way it is. It's probably going to have a, a buzzing sound, a vibration. Um, that's why I recommend, because it'll be whisper quiet if you balance it. So I highly recommend you balance it. Um, it's not that difficult. So, it, and it, it just saves a lot of wear and tear on the airplane because if the if the frame is not vibrating constantly while that motor is running because the prop's out of balance, then stuff's not going to vibrate loose and fall off. Screws aren't going to come loose. The motor's not going to fall out of the motor mount. It just saves you a lot of aggravation in the long run. So it's definitely worth balancing your prop, and you're going to get longer battery life. Uh, it, it'll definitely extend the, the flight times with a balanced prop. So here's the right wing. Um, all the decals are already applied. All the servos are installed. All the ball, all ball linked. You got the three section uh, scale flaps on the Corsair. You know, the single section here, a smaller section here that's connected to this section, and they spread open as it goes down. And we've got four servos, on, you know, two on each wing for the flaps to move these three panels, and then the aileron is on the end. We've got the gear doors here, uh, very this, this very scale, guys. I mean, there's so much detail. All the panel lines, the panel lines are way, way, way too big. Um, it, but I don't mind that. I know a lot of guys complain about that because it doesn't look right, but. The reason they do that is so that from standing, you know, 20, 30 feet away from the airplane, you can see the panel lines. If they made them scale, you know, you got to remember that on a real airplane, the panel line is about this wide, okay? So you see it, you know, but you're talking about a giant airplane with, you know, a 32nd of an inch panel line, which is, you know, visible. If they put a scale panel line on here, that thing would be less than a millimeter. You know, we're talking about a couple of thousands. 
you'd never see it unless you were standing this, you know, you'd have to get this close to it to see the panel lines. And they want you to see it from a distance to, to give you that scale effect, you know, so you could see the panel lines from, you know, a few 10, 15 feet away. Any farther away from that, they, they disappear anyway. But they're just trying to give you that, the, the visual, when you're standing there looking at it, so you don't have to get right up to it like this to see them. So, um, so I don't mind the, the way too big of panel lines. I know a lot of guys complain about that. I don't have a problem with it. But just so you know, they are way too, you know, way too big. They're over-exaggerated. But like I said, it's just there that way to help you see them from, a, you know, standing 15 feet away from the airplane. Um, it, it doesn't affect the way the plane flies, I'm sure. Just it's just a you know I know a lot of guys complain about it and I I don't I don't really have a problem with it I I think I understand why they do it and it makes sense so I don't have a problem with it okay and then last but not least this is the last piece in the box I'm just checking to make sure is the fuselage and um, I got to tell you guys this is really well done this is a beautiful airplane beautiful 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 airplane. Okay, and I love what they've done here. Let me, you know, hang on one second. Let me just set this here for one second. I want to move this stuff so I can set this other piece of the foam on top of here, but these ordnance are in the way. So let me move them so we don't mess anything up. Yeah, okay, so now... Let me get this out, and we can move this box. This is completely empty now. I'm going to make double sure that I'm not missing. Yeah, there's nothing else in the box. Okay, so that's everything. All right, let me get this off of here. You know, we'll go over this a little bit. Some of the updates that they've done to this is really nice. Okay, so uh, lots of detail. The antennas are already installed, which I kind of don't like because I wouldn't have put them on. Uh, these bits here just, you know, I have racks that I put my planes in, and these end up poking the plane above. Or if I put it in the rack inverted, the plane below, or they get broke off in transport. You know, those kind of bits I'm not real keen on. But they're already installed, so I'm not going to take them off. Uh, but I, if, if they had come separate, I wouldn't have put them on. You know, I would have left them off. Um, but that's just me. I, I, I don't mind them, and I like the fact that you get them. If I wanted to put this plane on display, I could just, you know, put them in, you know, without gluing them and, and for the display. And then when it's time to fly it, I would take them back off. Or at least I, when it was time to put it back in my rack, I would take them off. You know, and put them inside the plane or something just to, uh, to keep them where I know where they are, but not in the way. Um, lots of detail, beautiful. The decals are perfect, man. Smooth, no bubbles. The orange is paint. Um, so the orange stripe is paint. You know, this is all paint. There's no bare foam anywhere on this airplane. It's all painted. And then uh, the decals are, are uh, um, they're stickers, okay? I know guys complain about that one, too. You know, they think a water slide is a decal and a, a peel and stick is a sticker. To me, they're all decals. If you want to specify, then this is a sticker and it's a sticker decal and a water slide is a water slide decal. They're still decals, as far as I'm concerned. They're not, they're not um, templates where you would put it on and then paint and then pull it off. It's not a template. It's a put it on and stay on decal. That's that's my terminology. But these are peel and stick. They're not water slide. Um, good detail. Uh, pilot is your standard FMS. As far as I'm concerned, it looks like a German pilot. I don't think it looks like an American pilot at all. Not a big deal to me. I don't care. You know, he also this particular guy's got a very pink uh, color to his face. You know, he's, he's a little too pink. Uh, he must be pulling a lot of negative Gs, and he's about to red out because all the blood's rushed to his head because he's very pink. Um, but, I, you know, a lot of nice detail. The, 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 the 
instrument panel is fully instrumented. It's a sticker, but it's a good looking sticker. It looks really good. They did not put a flight control stick in here. Usually there's a stick in there. The pilot already has his hand gripped like he's holding the stick, but there's no stick in it. So, but this does not come off. This is this is permanent now. Used to, you know, that this part would all come off, you know, all the way back to here, and you'd have this humongous battery, in, you know, radio bay. Um, but this one's a little different. They've got this button here that is completely hidden. I mean, it's you can see it, but it doesn't stick up. It's flush, and it's hardly even noticeable. You'd look around on this plane for quite a while to try to figure out how to take this off. You'd think it's just magnetic, but there's actually a, a, a button here you push, and it, a spring-loaded clamp clip here actually pushes this up off. And then it clicks back on. It's a very positive clip, you know, when it clicks in. And then you have to push this absolutely flat, submerged, you know, flush mount button here to release that and open the battery bay. And then you have this enormous battery bay that will accept um, uh, I, I, up to a 7,000 pack. You know, you've got enough room here to put a 7,000 battery in the in the plane. So um, it, it's it, it'll accommodate a very big battery. So you've got plenty of room in there. There's plenty of room for the uh, the radio, the receiver. Not a, not an issue. There's definitely plenty of room in here for all of it. And uh, the 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 single mount wing connectors go right into this, there's a little control board here, a little wooden board with the connectors on it, right here, at the very back. And that's where those two wing, these two wing connectors are going to go there. And then you plug into that board, and then you plug into the wing, and that's it. Everything is, is everything's been plugged in. The lights, the retracts, flaps, ailerons, landing gear, it's all plugged in through that one wire. And that's, so that makes a very, very simple install. Uh, this has a uh, XT60 connector. It is a 6S airplane. Uh, but it's, it's a, you know, it's been my experience that these prop planes are very low normal uh, amp load. So this should be more than enough to handle the amp load. Uh, of a 6S battery, so I don't see, it doesn't need to be a XD90. Uh, the problem is though is most batteries, 6S batteries, are going to come with either an EC5 or an XD6, uh, XD90 connector um, when you get into a 6S battery. So it's going to be very hard to find a 6S battery with a XD60 connector. So you're going to either have to put an adapter on this um, or cut it off and solder whatever connector you want to use. I on this particular plane, uh, being a prop plane, I don't have a problem with using an adapter. I will put a probably an EC5 or an IC5 to an XD60 adapter here and fly it that way. I, I'm not going to cut this off. I'm sure that will handle the load just fine um, because prop planes just don't pull normally. Don't pull that much amperage. And since this has only got an 80 amp ESC in it, I'm 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 assuming that they've already done the legwork and it should be fine. Um, if if uh, after flying it, if I find that not to be true, I'll report back because I'll do a flight video as well. So if it gets hot, if the if the adapter gets hot after a full flight, I, I will definitely you know convey that to you in that video. That's what you get. So that's all. That's everything in the box, guys. Um, I gotta tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely crazy about this plane. This looks fantastic. Now I never, I have the the, the 1700 Mustang and the 1700 uh, P47. I never pulled the trigger on the old the original 1700 Corsair. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I like the new upgrades. Um, once we do, during the the, uh, the build video, I'll be able to put the retracts down and show you that. It comes with all machined aluminum retracts, which the other one did not. 
you know, the other one came with plastic cladding over a steel wire. And now it's all machined aluminums. Uh, and I know that because I've watched somebody else's review of this. So, um, and, and I will definitely show you that once we get it built. And uh, I'll get the gear down and, and we'll definitely touch base on that. But that's, that, that, that this is just fantastic, guys. The, the, new, the new and improved Corsair is really beautiful. Very, very nice. So, all right. So, and I, and I, a personal, just a personal note. I really like the orange stripe. I think that that adds. Um, I bought the uh, the uh, Arrows uh, RC. If you don't, if you haven't seen that, go to uh, Hobby Zone and look up the Arrows RC line of airplanes. Beautiful line of airplanes. Little plug here for them. I'm not paid to tell you any of this. This is all just me. I, I bought this airplane. It wasn't a freebie. Um, just sharing my love of this hobby with you. So uh, you can return the favor by clicking the subscribe button. And if you want to get all my videos, then hit the little notification bell. And then you'll get to see all my videos because you'll get notifications. If you don't want to do that, you can subscribe and never hear from me again. You'll just have to go look for my stuff. But at least hit the subscribe button because that helps. That's that's how you can return the favor to me for me doing these reviews. Um, at, at all it costs to me. I don't get anything for free. Everything I review has is, is been bought. And um, and I'd, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. So, But I, anyway, the Bearcat from Arrows RC was, it also has this, it's the same color blue got the orange stripe on it. I really loved that. I thought it was a beautiful airplane. And then when the Corsair came out with this orange stripe again, I was all over it because I just really like it. I, I just think it adds a little something more than just a plain blue airplane. So so that was a little side note there, guys. I just had to tell you, I really personally like the orange stripe. So, okay. So that's it for the unboxing, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Again, hit the subscribe button, comment in the uh, comment section below, and, uh, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right? We'll, see, we'll catch you on the uh, build coming up right next. So, don't go away, and thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.